everyone. We're Nick. And Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures so far, typically you'll find us vlogging our travels around the world. However, with this series of videos, then we're planning on doing something a little bit different because we've noticed that as we've gone through each of the countries in the world, then we've noticed there have been some things that are slightly different to what we're accustomed to in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this channel is so that we can share our travel experiences and hopefully inspire other people to travel some more. So with that, we want to share some of the tips and tricks that we've picked up in each of the countries we've visited so that if you want to go to some of the same places that we visited, we can provide you with some hopefully helpful knowledge and information that will help you in planning your trip and navigating your way around a little bit easier while you're there. Today's video is going to be focused on traveling through Turkey. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that our itinerary took us through Istanbul, Ephesus, Bodrum, Antalya, and finally Cappadocia. While a few of the tips and tricks that we're going to be providing will be about some of these destinations, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today should focus on the country as a whole. So let's get started. We found that Turkey as a whole was predominantly cash based, so make sure that you withdraw cash in advance of going, or there are so many ATMs around, they're really not hard to find at all. You can just take your bank card and withdraw cash once you're there. That's very easy to do. However, tourist attractions, hotels, and supermarkets often take credit card, so you will get a little bit of use out of your credit card while you're there. The big thing to note in regards to finances in Turkey is that their inflation is insane. So since we have published our videos about Turkey, the prices we shared in those videos are probably out of date and things are likely more expensive. We had a tour guide basically tell us that there was a museum in the center of town that had one price one week and it had probably increased by 25% the next week. It was absolutely nuts and apparently this is pretty common practice. In terms of bus travel between cities, then we took a few in order to get to the respective destinations that we've listed in our itinerary. The service when you get on board is actually really good. The seats are phenomenally comfy and actually you have a driver but also an attendant who brings out snacks and sometimes drinks through the course of the journey. So that can help with getting things through if you're just being a bit peckish and want some extra food to keep you tiding over. However, meal service is still not included. So it is worth making sure that if you are really needing to go during a meal time, make sure you bring food with you. The other thing to consider though, is that cancellations do happen certainly more frequently than we found with a lot of other bus services in a lot of other countries. So it is really worth making sure that on the day you are progressively checking the timetables because they do update and cancellations can happen less than a couple of hours before your departure time. So do keep your eyes on the boards. Another thing just to note with buses though is that typically they do not have toilets on board. Thankfully there will be rest stops included where you will be able to go to a service stop for a comfort break. However, do just keep this in mind before you chug that gigantic bottle of water. Continuing on with buses, sometimes the intercity bus terminals are a little bit outside of the city you're going to, but there are often smaller buses, local buses, that go from the intercity bus terminals into the city centers. So this happened to us when we were in Bodrum, but we just asked a local who kind of directed us to the correct bus and got us into town. And then because we arrived obviously at the local bus station, we knew exactly how to get back to the big bus station when we were leaving Bodrum to go on to the next city. So you might have to use a local bus or alternatively, if you want to spend a little bit more money, I'm sure you could get like a taxi or an Uber as well. As with most countries that you go to, public transport is 
always cheaper than getting a taxi. And thankfully, the major cities in Turkey are pretty well connected. In terms of the way that the transit works though, then you can't just get an individual ticket just for a specific day pass or anything like that. Instead, you have to pick up transport cards. Each of these transport cards is only available per city. So you can't pick up one in Istanbul and use it in Antalya, for example, then there's no nationwide system for this. So you will have to pick up a new card for each city that you're in. In terms of how it works when you come to buy a fare though, then you have the option to buy just a single trip fare, which comes on its own individual card, or you can preload a number of trips onto another different card. However, every single time that you do this, there is an additional card deposit because you do have to get a new card every time. You can't just top up your existing card. So it is worth trying to figure out just how many trips you need while you're in a city so that you can make it as economical as possible. Now on to the good stuff, food. Street food is always cheaper than going to a restaurant. There are two street foods that stand out to us in particular as being delicious and also very cheap. One is samit, which is basically a bread that comes in the shape of a circle and the middle is hollow, so like a donut, but it's more like a pretzel because it is savory. And they offer you spreads with it. I think there's a cheese spread or Nutella, but if you just keep it plain, then it's cheaper than if you add a spread but it's delicious just by itself. The other cheap street food that we noticed was corn and they would just basically barbecue it on the side of the street and then they just put it on a stick so it's easy to hold and give it to you. As ever, if you're looking to save money and are on a budget, then supermarkets are always a cheap option, just like in most countries. It's far cheaper than going out to eat at a restaurant. And there is pretty good variety. We found fruit a little bit hard to come by there. Vegetables were very accessible, but I think it's just because they eat seasonally, which is the way we should be doing it. And so that's why there was probably a limited amount of seasonal fruit in our experience. In terms of the best food to get, where do you even begin with Turkish cuisine? It is widely renowned as having some of the most amazing dishes that money can buy. Obviously, you have things like dinner kebabs, kofta, simit that we've mentioned. We also tried this thing called kokorets. Probably best if you don't Google what's in it. Just enjoy it. It's really nice. Baklava, kunefa, and then, of course, Turkish delight and coffee. If you're looking for something to wash all that food down with, just know that alcohol is quite pricey in Turkey, but that's because it is a Muslim country. Soft drinks, juice, and water are all good options and quite affordable. The most affordable option on most menus though besides water is actually tea. It turns out that Turks do love their tea and import more of it than the British do. So it is a major staple in most households and certainly you will find it to be probably one of the cheapest things on any menu anywhere. Tap water isn't potable in Turkey, but you can wash your hands with it, obviously shower with it. And also you can brush your teeth with it. There are certain countries where you shouldn't brush your teeth in the water, but Turkey was one of those countries where it was fine to do that, but you just shouldn't drink the tap water. Just make sure that you buy bottled water. And because everybody really does need to buy bottled water there, it is very cheap. As we alluded to with regards to alcohol, this is a Muslim country. As a result of this, then thankfully, this means that all places of worship by definition are free. Before you go into any place of worship though, you do need to cover your knees, your shoulders, and your hair as a mark of respect. In other countries, market sellers might be quite aggressive with their sales techniques, but here in Turkey, they're very friendly and simply saying no thank you will suffice. They will hear you, respect you, and just leave you alone and you can be on your way. Now for some city-based advice, we'll start with Istanbul. 
One of the major sites to go to is the beautiful Tokapi Palace. However, it is worth noting that there are certain parts of the grounds that you can visit without needing to actually enter at all. And these are vast, they're gorgeous, they have plenty of wildlife in there as well. And so if you want to save some money and just look outside the gates to it, then you are welcome to do so without spending any money at all. For those of you that don't know, Istanbul is a city that is on two continents. Part of it is in Europe and the other part of it is in Asia and it is separated by the Bosphorus Strait. So of course there is a ferry that runs between the two sides of the city and the ferries run regular schedule and it's quite cheap. The only thing you need to keep an eye out for is the ferry terminal that you're getting off at. There are two that are quite close together. So if you make a mistake, it's really not a big deal because it's quite walkable. But just keep an eye out for what stop you get on at so that you know to get off at the same one and don't make an error. We ended up getting off one stop early. But as I said before, it was fine. We could walk it but don't make the same mistake we did. In Istanbul, then they have what is known as the Istanbul carts for all of their public transport. Unlike the other cities that I was mentioning where you have to pay for specific amounts of trips, this one is just a charge card. You load money onto it, you tap it, and then it charges you accordingly. However, what we didn't realize is that one card is good enough to be valid for four people's journeys. So you can tap on for that many people at one time for a single trip. We didn't know this. We ended up paying more money because you actually have to pay a deposit for the card. So if you do want to save a little bit of added money on the transit side of things, then this is definitely a good tip. If you're looking to save money, then staying on the Asian side and eating on the Asian side is slightly cheaper than staying or eating on the European side. More of the tourist attractions are located on the European side, but the Asian side is a little bit cheaper. The next pointer that we've got is about Bodrum. One of the main things to do because it is a gorgeous seaside town is to go to the beach. However, it is interesting because a lot of the beaches are part of restaurants. And so as a result, if you do want to enjoy that section of the beach, and especially if you want to enjoy a lounger to sun yourself, then it is worth noting that you usually have to pay a little bit of money in order to get there. In some cases, it can just be a flat fee and then you get it for the entire day. Or in the case of it being owned by a restaurant or a bar, then there is an expectation that you have to buy a drink or some food while you're there. So before you do try and venture out onto one of those beaches, it is just worth talking to whoever is nearest to ask how much it may be to use the lounges there. One of the biggest tourist attractions in all of Turkey is going to Cappadocia. And that is the area where you have all of the fairy chimneys built into the mountains. And you see all these beautiful hot air balloons just floating over top of the beautiful landscape. We tried to book online, which is definitely possible to do, but the prices are astronomical. I think the cheapest we found was probably 240 euros per person and it went upwards from there. So we had kind of thought, you know what, we're not going to be able to swing this. However, when we arrived to our guest house, she was able to get us a lovely hot air balloon ride at sunrise, the exact same package as what we had seen online for 150 euros per person. So I would almost say don't book online hold off until you're able to talk to the owner or the staff at your accommodation. That being said, I also don't want to say don't book ahead of time because in high season, first of all, the prices could be higher, but it also might be sold out. But definitely check with the place you're staying so that you can see if you're getting the best price. And that concludes our tips and tricks for Turkey. Obviously, as with Every single one of these tips and tricks videos, we do completely understand that what we're providing you is not an exhaustive list. So 
If you have been to any of these places, if there are things that we are missing in terms of advising people on useful things to know, then please feel free to leave something in the comments so that everybody can get the benefit of it. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.